Hey Earthlings, let's talk everything new in View 3. My name is Mitchell and let's just not waste any time and jump straight into the new major features being introduced with View 3. So I think we should start off with the major new addition that I'm sure most people are pretty aware of by now, which is the Composition API. So why did we even need a new View API? If you're familiar with View 2, you'll be quite used to what is called the Options API, which looks like this. Now all of your data, your computed properties, your watches, your methods, and so on, are contained in their own options within the view object. This feels really nice and intuitive, so if something's not broke, why try and fix it? To answer that question, let's take a look at a larger example. As you can see, things are starting to get quite out of hand. The options API is built with the intention that all of your methods are organized in the same place. Same with all of your computed properties, your watches, I think you get the point. When a component gets too big, which is what can happen in some large real world applications, the options API struggles to scale with that application. In comes the composition API. The composition API handles data in a new format, basically organizing all of itself within a setup function inside your view object. It takes advantage of using special view three functions to turn normal JavaScript into reactive variables that you can reference in your template like you're used to with the options API from view two. Now, you might look at this and think, maybe it makes things a little bit more complicated than before, and it doesn't look that much better. So why use it? Well, let's bring back our large options API example and compare it with an equivalent setup using the composition API. Comparing these two approaches to the same data setup, we can see how in large scale components, we're able to organize our code in a much more intuitive way. Instead of all the methods in the same place, we can split all of our data, methods, computed properties, and so on into groups that make more sense to a human allowing much cleaner and readable code that is easier to navigate and customize for your specific use case. So I definitely recommend giving it a test to see how the composition API feels when you're utilizing it within your components to build cleaner and, and more organized code. Now, moving on, the next major change we're going to talk about is how the Vue team have rewritten the entire framework to be faster and smaller than Vue 2. So let's go over some specific ways that the Vue team have been able to implement this faster and smaller Vue version. And then at the end, we'll go over some benchmarks as well to just see how the numbers stack up. Let's start with how Vue 3 is smaller, which is by utilizing a method called tree shaking. In its simplest form, tree shaking refers to removing what is called dead code. When you compile your application to be served online, the compiler removes all unnecessary code that won't actually be used in the final compiled project. As you can imagine, unless you're a massive and complicated application, you're likely not gonna be utilizing every single feature and piece of code that Vue 3 has to offer. So when you compile your project for production, all of the dead code is removed, leaving the slimmest version of your project possible. Smaller project size means faster page loads for your users. Next up, let's talk about how Vue 3 is faster. A specific way that Vue has made its rendering faster is by implementing what it's calling a compiler-informed virtual DOM. Sounds a bit complicated, right? Well, here's the technical description of what that actually means. Basically, what all of this means is that Vue 3 has been written to compile your code in a way that ends up being much more performant. If you're interested in the nitty gritty of how it accomplishes this with a much more technical description, I definitely recommend looking into Vue's explanation further. Now, my favorite part about improved speed and size the statistics. With tree shaking, Vue 3 boasts that its size is up to 41% lighter than Vue 2. It's also up to 55% faster on initial render, has up to 133% faster page updates, and consumes up to 55% less memory than the same project using Vue 2. I've added a link in the description where the Vue team has created a quick spreadsheet of benchmarks with how Vue 3 performs against Vue 2 on different browsers. If you love stats, Definitely go give it a look. Now, next up on our list of changes is a new feature called Teleport. So what is Teleport and why do I need it? In simple terms, Teleport allows us to render components wherever we want within a page. Most of the time, a component should be rendered naturally wherever its place is in the template. But specific features make more sense to be rendered outside of where it logically is sitting in our code. To show an example of this, let's look at a common feature of web applications today, the modal. In this example, the modal button component would allow us to click a button and open a modal on the page. The problem with this is that the modal generated in the component is now nested deeply within the application, where it would make most sense to sit right at the top as a direct child of the body. Teleport allows us to solve this problem easily by wrapping a modal in a teleport tag and then telling it where to render. It's as simple as that. Now our modal will be rendered on the page as a child of the body, allowing it to be placed above the rest of the application on the page. So give it a shot and let us know how you go in the comments down below or even come join us on our Discord channel and have a chat with us there. Our last major feature section is on a few experimental single file component features. These are implemented and available on Vue 3, but they're still considered experimental until they gather a little bit more feedback. First up is the setup attribute on a single file component script tag. 
Let's take a quick look at a basic view three component using the composition API. Now, while this example is pretty clean and simple as it is, the view team has given us a way to simplify this even further using a setup attribute on the script tag. This allows us to skip a whole bunch of boilerplate and immediately get to writing our important code. Using the setup attribute, we can directly export our variables and methods like we were writing just a plain piece of JavaScript, cutting out the amount of lines necessary for this simple component from 10 to just two. To get your component variables like props and emit, all you need to do is add them as arguments to the setup attribute like this. The last question you may have is how do I add other component options like names or props? The view team have solved this as well by adding your normal export default view object to define these options. The next experimental single file component feature is another attribute, but this time on the style tag. Using the vars attribute allows us to reference CSS variables that are being generated from our component state. Take a look at this example. This feature now allows us to dynamically update our CSS stylings using our state logic by referencing the state variable in the vars attribute and then placing that inside a normal CSS variable reference. And our last experimental feature is called suspense. Suspense allows us to render our component when our async setup function has resolved and show a fallback render like a loading indicator in the meantime. In this example, the fallback template is rendered first. And once the async setup function has resolved after fetching the user, the default template is then rendered. Simplifying component rendering that relies on async data like fetching from an external API. This feature is still mostly undocumented as it's waiting until Vue 3.1 for its final release, but it is accessible right now using Vue 3. Now we've already covered a lot so far, so these next changes I'm going to add in a little lightning round to quickly go over them as fast as possible. First up in our lightning round of mentions is that Vue 3 has internally been split up into multiple decoupled modules. This includes modules like the compiler core, runtime core, server renderer, and much more. The most interesting in my opinion is the Vue reactivity module. This unlocks many advanced use cases that you won't ever really need to know, but a special example of this I found on Reddit, which I thought was interesting was this post by Wob Soriano. This is being done using a library called ReactiveView, created by Anthony Fu which is utilizing Vue 3's reactivity module to basically add the Vue 3 composition API to React. A fun little example of what the individual Vue 3 decoupled modules are capable of doing without the rest of Vue 3's code base. Now, it wouldn't be a new front-end technology in 2020 without TypeScript support, and Vue have gone all in, rewriting the entire framework using TypeScript. With everything fully typed, the new composition API is great at inferring types within your components. All you need to do to enable type inference inside your component is wrap it inside a define component view function. And this can work with both the options API and the composition API. If you're excited about using TypeScript with your Vue 3 application, check out the documentation for more information and TypeScript specific features. Next up, Vue 3 now enables a way to have multiple root elements within a single file component. Previously, a component has always needed to have a single root element, generally forcing you to wrap every component in a div tag. Vue 3 now enables you to remove this wrapper where it makes sense for it not to exist and instead have multiple root elements, although you will need to explicitly define where attributes should be distributed where necessary. And finally, Vue 3 enables the ability for multiple V models to be used on a single element. Taking a quick look at this example provided by LogRocket's blog, we can see this in action. This becomes more of an advanced feature, but will definitely make certain applications a lot more simplified and enable more niche V model use cases. And that's it. That's all the major features that have arrived with Vue 3. Of course, there are even smaller changes that we didn't go over in this video. So if you have any more interest in every single tiny little detail that has been changed in Vue 3, go check out the documentation or the Vue 3 release notes for a little bit more information. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Hopefully you feel a little bit more up to date with the state of Vue 3. As always, if you liked the video, don't forget to leave a like, support us by subscribing, come hang out with us on our Discord. We would love to see you. See you next time, Earthlings.